first step, and you'll need your ruler for this, um, I want to see where there are important points, and I'm going to map them onto, you can see I've got my first derivative, my second derivative, sorry, my function, my first derivative, and my second derivative, you can just see it there. Okay. So, with my ruler I say, hey look, I can see a stationary point there, stationary point, I can see another stationary point there. Okay, so with my ruler, because I'm trying to plot these on the same axis, just very, very lightly, I'm going to go vertically down from each of those stationary points. And I'm going to say, okay, down to there. I'm only going to go to my first derivative, and I wonder if you can do y. And from my second stationary point, I also draw it down like that. Okay, so you can see stationary point one, stationary point two. I know what x values they're going to correspond to because that's what vertical lines mean, same x value. Okay. All right, now secondly, I'm then going to get my green for gradient. If you don't have, um, if you don't have a green pen, gradient. Gradient. Choose, choose something else. Okay. And what I'm going to do is with pluses and minuses, I'm going to indicate gradient on my function. Okay. So you can see I've got an increasing function to the left of this stationary point. So I'm going to go uh, all my pluses here. Like so. Uh, to the right, in between the two stationary points, I'm decreasing. So I've got negatives, 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 negatives. And then lastly, to the right of this stationary point, positive again. Okay, now what does this indicate? My green signs tell me what will the sign of the first derivative be? What regions will it pass through? Okay, now you can see it should be positive, negative, positive. At these two points, which are stationary points, what does that tell you about the first derivative? Zero. Should be zero, right? So therefore, now coming down to my first derivative, right? These lines that I drew down, they are zeros of the first derivative, right? They're zeros of the first derivative. And correspondingly, I ought to be getting a sort of, well, if I'm going to go positive, negative, positive, it's a parabola through here, right? And just before I draw this, there's one other important feature that I need up in my top graph, and I've just kind of ignored it, right? Uh, new color. Okay. So I've got my gradient there. I know roughly what regions I'm going to go through from my first derivative. I might just quickly, um, it's why have I No, it's okay. I'm just going to shade here. Shade, 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 shade. Okay. But what I'm missing, of course, is the geometric feature that matches to the second derivative, which is concavity. Oh. Right, second derivative. So you can see there are parts of this that are concave down and parts of it that are concave up. So I'm going to draw arrows to indicate concavity. Okay. So you can see here concave down. These are all concave down unambiguously. Right. This is still concave down here, so if I were to test that stationary point, I would have found that its second derivative is negative. That's why it's a local maximum, a relative maximum. And it's still concave down here and here, but then it starts to get a bit blurry. Okay? So here is where, like I said to you before, I get my piece of paper and I say, okay, uh, definitely concave down. Still definitely concave down. Still definitely concave down. Okay, around here it's starting to get a bit questionable. It's starting, if I go to here, I've definitely gone past the point of inflection. Do you see that? It's definitely starting to curve back upwards, okay? So let me go back a bit further. I'm guessing it's somewhere around there, okay? Approximately there. So I'm going to mark that in. Oh my gosh, Aaron. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I've got my point of inflection that I'm expecting. Okay. And again, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw this one, this time vertically, all the way down to the second derivative. Why am I drawing it all the way down? Because it corresponds to a zero. Because if it's a point of inflection, the second derivative should be zero. Okay, so I've got a zero there on the second derivative. And you can just barely see it. It doesn't have to be right. Okay, now, you are correct, as we've noticed before, right, there are other cases where, number one, the second derivative being zero doesn't guarantee a point of inflection, and a point of inflection doesn't guarantee that the second derivative is zero. However, we know what the special cases are, right? What are the special cases? For example, uh, I've got a point of inflection, how do I know I, there's actually, you know, yeah, and if you want to suggest. 
Oh, I was just going to suggest a grab. Why? Because it's uh, x to the power of 4. Okay, so x to the power of 4 is a case. Now, do I have x to the power of 4 here? Clearly not, so great, I don't need to worry about it. Secondly, the case where I have a point of inflection, but the second derivative is not, is not zero, is because I can have a point of inflection when I don't have a second derivative at all, okay? There are two ways I can have no second derivative. Two ways. Can anyone remember that? This is a bit harder. If it's uh, like the degree of the polynomial that you're trying to differentiate is too low. Like okay, so y well, to the x. Okay, Maybe now what you're thinking of is interesting. Um, I can still have, remember, I, the question I'm posing now, let me try and clarify is, some graphs, they have second derivative at some points, and they have second derivative, they don't have a second derivative at other points, right? There are only two ways you can have no second derivative, okay? Oh. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh. Actually, sorry, take it back, three. Okay, number one, if the function itself doesn't exist, okay, if up here I have a hole, well then I will have holes all the way down. Right, so there's the first thing, a discontinuity in the original function. Okay, give me another one. Two, there are two more. Uh, All right. Not differentiable. Okay, if it's not differentiable, so something like say the absolute value of x. Right, the absolute value of x, it exists there, it is continuous, but when you differentiate, you're in trouble. Okay, there's one more. Discontinuity. That's what I'm looking for. I'm oh, looking for oh, discontinuity. Like, oh. what would give me a discontinuity in the second derivative? That's I gave you a classic thing. example, right? Discontinuity. In Okay, so if the first derivative doesn't exist, the second derivative can't either. What would it mean if the first derivative doesn't exist? What's the if classic? It's a line. Vertical. If it's if it's vertical, oh. right? If it's a straight line, you still have a derivative. It's just it's a constant, right? Okay. So let me just summarize that because we just said something. It wasn't my main point, but um, no second derivative. There are three things that can make that happen. Number one, when you have no function. Okay, so if the function itself doesn't exist, you're in trouble. Okay. Secondly, if you've got something which is non-differentiable, like if it's um, like a, a piecemeal function or something like that, so not differentiable, or if you have a cusp, those kinds of things, if it's not differentiable, of course you're not going to get a second derivative. Right? But the last one is if, um, if it's vertical. And we looked at the cube root of x. Do you remember that? Okay. Now you have a look at this. One, two, three. Are any of those the case on this function? And the answer is no. It's continuous, it's differentiable, it's smooth. That was my, um, my informal synonym for differentiability. And it certainly doesn't look vertical. Okay, so I'm all good. So therefore, I know it's going to pass through zero. Now the reason why I point that out before I draw my first derivative is, if the second derivative is zero down here, what does that mean about the first derivative? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, there's going to be a stationary point for the first derivative. Uh, it's going to be like some flat, like that. Okay. Now I'm ready to draw this thing. Okay. Like you said, like you told me, there's going to be a parabola through these three regions. So let's just draw that roughly. Okay. Like so. Now, even though I don't know for sure, I have every reason to guess that this is a cubic. This is a quadratic, which makes this last one. A straight line, it's linear, right? Now just quickly, thinking about uh, going back to the concavity up here, right? I said concave down all the way here, but I didn't finish it. Over on the right hand side of that point of inflection, it's all concave up. Concave up, concave up, concave up. So what does that mean about the regions that my second derivative passes through? Well, if it's concave down, it should have a negative second derivative, right? And if it's concave up, it should have a positive second derivative. So now I know where my second derivative is going to go. It's going to look something like this. And of course, the actual slant of this, I have no idea, but it, it doesn't really matter. I have the general shape. And that's all you can be expected to know when you don't have any numbers. All you have is, well, yeah, the general shape. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah.